Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat. So today we're gonna to do a flip through of the Frog Journal. I have finished it for as far as I'm gonna finish it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna sell this one. It's not really up to par for um, the stitching of the journal itself. You can see back here, it kinda of got bunched and stuff. And yeah, I just, and I'm not really sure how to make that better just because of the way the thicknesses and all that but it was great um it was a great experience and um great to learn some of the things that i learned by making this journal i love it um i think it's really fun but it's just that you know i wouldn't for the hours that i put into it and then it just not coming out how i approve <laughs> i just was like i'm just gonna keep this one so anyway but it's fun to see and i'm gonna show you guys because you've hung out with me this whole journal journal journey and um yeah it's been quite the journey right <clears throat> so anyway I um have finished it like I said so we'll just start with the front here and go right through so we have our little uh, cluster and I did show this little um stitched cluster on my um video yesterday so that's that and then we have here on this first page when you open it the um the kind of like loaded envelope pocket that kind of looks like all different um, maybe pages of stuff that are just laying around on your desk or whatever. I have this little tag and my Explore that I just inked and uh, grungied up, you know, roughed up the edges and all that. And that's a Tim Holtz piece. And then that little picture is attached. So it's like another little tuck behind there. And these tags I kept real simple just using um, dyes and acrylic paint and uh, just a few little things it could they could be written on entirely <clears throat> and I did those on my own so yeah I mean definitely fun no doubt I really enjoyed making it and like I said it was definitely a learning experience um, yeah it's just not like you can see I'm just not happy with how uh, the pages ended up coming out. <clears throat> but as far as ephemera goes, there was a lot of great ephemera in this book that can obviously be used in a paper journal. I mean, this you would just glue to your page instead of sewing to your page. So as far as the ephemera goes, there's some really great ephemera in this, in this book for ideas and all that good stuff. <clears throat> And just it'll be nice to have and look at sometimes if I you know I'm struggling for an idea or whatever and I do love the two digis the ribbit and croak they were super fun to play with and they do go well with all the Tim Holtz bits so it was just very fun to make this one and then here we have one of our little um, kind of uh, scientific slides sort of little booklets and I did put this little piece of file folder down here that I got in Happy Mail. And then there's another one of the Tim Holtz um, flashcards. And this opens up. And this is just some green dyed paper. I think I dyed it with Kool-Aid or my niece did. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I just have a stack of all my colored papers. And then I just added all the walnut oxide to it and the paint. So it just looks real grungy. And that just tucks back there behind our little um, guest check that we folded the bottom up on. And it's just got all kinds of little fun ephemera in it that I've added. I think I will stick this one back here, actually. I like the butterflies back there. That's a that's in my digi, that piece. <clears throat> I think that one is in the rivet. And I think that's rivet as well. And then these two pieces are Tim Holtz. And this is my this and that um, digital, just the little labels there. And then we flip this next page and we have our little Tim Holtz um, packaging. That's what this was originally. And I just turned it into a little flip that flips up. Oh, I never did add anything to that pocket. <laughs> <clears throat> and you can write here, journal there, whatever. So that was a fun one. And there's a video for all the ephemera that you see in here. Uh, not for that last little um, slide uh, flip thing because I did one on video already that's also in here. So 
and then this was just that uh, bag and then a large tag. And this is a Tim Holtz and that's one of my houses, these little houses and these are in my Etsy shop, come in different sizes and they're laser cut. So they're just fun to stamp on ink, add little bits of paper, whatever, you know. And then this was one of the first ones that we did and it just has a little um, card in here to journal on. So these are fun. These are seed packets. I got these years ago at Target. I think they kind of went around. Everybody sort of had those for a while, but you could use any little envelope to do the same thing. You just attach the flap to a guest check, and then I added a little glassine bag on the front of the guest check, and it just has a tag in it. Yeah, so the, all this ephemera I think is definitely useful. And my toad abode and these little uh, mushroom houses are also in my Etsy shop if you want to make your own toad abode or fairy house or what have you <clears throat> and then I just uh, collaged all this and stitched it all on there and then over here we have another guest check um, that I put one piece of guest check over the top and then this is a whole guest check just so you can get that pocket on there and then that is stitched by fabric onto the um, backing fabric. There's a little envelope here and in the envelope are just a few little bits. That's from my this and that and this is Tim Holtz. And then these are Tim Holtz pieces that I just stitched on there for fun. They're kind of <laughs> silly. <clears throat> And then this is also an envelope, or not also, but this is a window envelope that I've just collaged all over. And then it opens like a book, and there's a little pocket here, and that's what you're seeing through the window is this little tag. <clears throat> and this pocket is in my Ribbit digital download, and so is the ladybug here. And these are all Tim Holtz pieces that I just glued together and um, made into a tuck for the ladybug. You can write all on this part and on here. And then I did a little um, just paper stack out of all different papers from the Ribbit kit. So that's that. And then when you come over and flip this side open, there's this pocket that we just did recently with um, just the, like quilted sort of idea of patchwork fabric all over um, the book page. And then large tag and another tag. <clears throat> and then this one um, it was one of the Gail Augustinelli pockets. She had the little canvas ones that she had purchased somewhere and then um, made uh, her own version on her a YouTube channel and I just kind of copied it. She cut a like a filigree sort of edge on hers when she flipped down the piece of fabric. I just flipped this fold up and left it raw. I didn't flip it down and cut any design in it and then I just added the other fabrics across there and some more fabric up here which you can see. <clears throat> and this is one of the CD covers from my um digital. This one is from, I can't remember if that one's Ribbit or Croak. I think this one's Croak. This one is Croak. Yeah, I remember because these bugs were in Croak. And then this um, was the bottom of a tag from Rivet. I just cut off the top of the tag so it would fit inside of this. But I shrunk this down from its original size, which is a great idea that I got from uh, Carol Laws. Thank you so much, Carol. It's a great idea to shrink these down because then they can just be added into a pocket or, you know, you can put them on as flips and all that, which I do have somewhere else. There's a little flip one. But anyway, that just tucks in there and goes in the pocket. And she did hers <clears throat> really fun. She would glue them to the corner of her page so that they're tucked back here. And then she left, she didn't put any of the like transparency paper here. And then she also had this as a little tuck spot. So that was another great idea. <clears throat> Large tag from Ribbit. And a jelly plate um, paper there. And then this one flips this way. And we have our fabric. This is all 
fabric pocket. There's a few little bits of paper there and there on that cluster, but um, yeah, it's mostly just all fabrics. And then our fabric tag that we did together. That just goes in there. And then this is that little um, Gail Agostinelli faux front envelope. I oriented mine in the other direction so that, you know, your pockets are like this way. And then that. And this is Tim Holtz paper. This is from um, the Croak Digital. And this is a piece of my ephemera. And this is from my Torn Paper and Ferns. And this, this image is also from Croak. And that little one is from Croak. So is this one. So Ribbit and Croak are the two. And my this and that, that's pretty much what I've used for this whole journal. And then bits and bobs from Tim Holtz. Okay, and that just goes in there. And it can go either direction. And then over here we have the back of our postcard. This was one of the first um, things that we did. And there's just a little uh, notepad down here that I stitched on. So that's all just different fabrics. And so you can write here and you can write in the little notepad. And up here this is just a cluster of fabrics and various other little bits that I stitched there. And then when you flip that page over, this is the front of the postcard. And that's from my Ribbit Digital. And just other little pieces of fabric and ephemera. And then in the center here we have our large pocket made from a, this is my number 10 window envelope cover from the Ribbit Digital download. And I've just added this piece of plastic in here to look like a number 10 window envelope. There's no envelope at all involved in this. It's just that number 10 window envelope cover cover, and um, just a piece of acetate. And that makes a spot for this tag. And then when you um, take that off, you can see the um, fabric behind because this number 10 window envelope cover has two spots. So you can see all the way through if you want to, or you could leave the back closed on that. And then this is from my Croak digital download. Just a little piece of uh, map added there, and then a this and that label. And I do have, you know, fabric stitched all over. And then for our closure is um, one of the uh, whale tails, and then just a strip of paper that I've cut with a deckle edge to hold it closed there. And then here's this, I did this um, scientific slide sort of little booklet um, in one of my videos of ephemera. So yeah, so you can see that if you want. That's why I didn't do the other one on camera because I figured, you know, you would get the idea by the, this video. <laughs> okay, I was tucking there and there's writing and writing. So yeah, some great ephemera. This really was fun to do all this different ephemera for this. Because these um, pieces could be used in any kind of journal. Sorry, my cats are fighting with each other. <laughs> Pasha probably wants to play. Jules does not. So that's how it goes around here. Um, this is the little journaling tag or card that we did the other day. So that I just tucked in there. I thought it was fun to see that over on the side there. And then here we have a large pocket and I didn't put anything in this, but you can see that's a large pocket. And then this closes and we flip it over and there is a little almost like journal in here. I have not stitched this together yet, but I will. And then it will be like its own little mini journal. And this is kind of a great idea if um, you're not, like if you've never made a journal, you've collected some things, but you're just not sure or feel comfortable. I sprayed this with coffee, so it's kind of coming up right here. I need to glue that. But anyway, um, you're just not sure about making a whole journal because you're you're just worried you're going to mess something up because I know I was there, you know, when I first started. This is just a piece of Tim Holtz um, cardstock. You could back it with another piece of cardstock, which I would do if this wasn't going inside of that journal. I wanted it fairly thin since it's going to be encased in there and I didn't want anything too, too bulky, but you could definitely um, back it and then you would have a thicker cover. I did add a piece of fabric here. So when I do stitch it in, you know, it's not going to tear along here at all. 
And then I just have um, folded up different pages and I haven't decorated these. I did put that one um, long cluster. This is from my um, Torn Paper and Ferns digital download if you're wondering where these mushrooms come from. That's a uh, ribbit. This is croak. And then see here, this is the little side cluster that we did in the sewing video yesterday. So that's the only decoration I've added. And that's mostly because I cut off this butterfly's head, basically. <laughs> and I just didn't like the way it looked, so I put that over it. But, you know, just pick out some different papers that you want to put in and um, just keep it super simple for starting. Like, like I said, if you've never done a journal before, and then you can just stitch these in using a three hole pamphlet stitch. And um, then you have your own little journal to start with, or these make great little gifts because they're not like, it's not a huge journal. It's not going to take up just hours of your time, you know. So this looks all wrinkly because I spritzed it with coffee and I was just trying to age it up a little bit. So anyway, that is all done. And we'll go over the three hole pamphlet stitch another time. I'm not going to do it right now. I'll do it with my next journal, um, which will be from this digital, which is new in my Etsy shop. This is my, uh, what did I call it? We flower fairies we flower fairies so the last one with the fairies was we forest folk but this is we flower fairies sorry i was playing with my light trying to get a little more light on that okay so y'all get one of these pages with all um the collage so this is all collage work that i've done by hand in the background you can see and then i've also added computer um, other like photographs this little strips of stuff are is a photograph that I took when we were in Florida of a kind of a the Spanish moss it was all in a clump and I took a picture of it and so it gives you that um, sort of like threads or whatever so yeah I added that and then there's the two images and then I have the same page again without the two images without the fairy so this can be used as a background page so that's what I always try to do is give you one with like the decorations and then one without so that, you know, you could use this for an entirely different journal. You know, it didn't, it doesn't have to be the fairy one. And then we have this one and I drew all these little, you know, fairies and things. And these are mushrooms that I made out of collage paper. It's the same way that I did the wee forest folk mushrooms, just different shape than those ones. And then you'll get a page with just the mushrooms. And then we have the flowers that we did together. These funny little <laughs> flowers here and the mushrooms and some fairies. Or that's not a fairy, that's a gnome, but a frog. And then this one has all kinds of those flowers that we made together. So those have been scanned in and some of the colors I've changed, added color to or whatever. And then the two fairies. And then there's a dragonfly up there. And then these flowers are all those ones. So you get a page with just the flowers. And then this one with the um, fairy on the bee and the fairy on the ladybug. And here's the flower page by itself. Sorry, these got kind of mixed up because I was trying to list them on Etsy and... Um, was counting how many of what kind of pages I had. This is one that I've just muted way down and I did the same thing in the Wee uh, Forest Folk with the background mushroom page, just so that you can uh, write on it, but it still has something on it for interest. And this is just a background page, fun colors, and another background page. That's that Spanish moss again. And then there's another background. And there's some lichen in here. And that's what this is. It just, I changed the color of it from its, that was a photograph that I took also in Florida of lichen growing on a tree. And then here we have, this is a jelly print, jelly plate print in the background from Bubble Wrap. And then I just added the dragonfly. So that's kind of fun. And then we have one number 10 envelope cover. 
in one CD envelope cover, which you can shrink down or keep large, however you choose. And then we have lots of fussy cuts. So these ones here that are a little darker in color than these ones, um, these ones are done the same way I did the Wee Forest Folk. I drew these after I made the Wee Forest Folk digital, and I only drew three of them, and then I just sort of, I don't know, sometimes you just get tired of <laughs> certain projects. Um, these have all been kind of antiqued is what I call it. That's why they kind of have that um, inked look or uh, distressed look or whatever. And I did that on the Wee Forest Folk digital to all the fairies because I wanted them uh, to go with that grungy thing. These ones are real bright and um, I didn't want that for the Wee Forest Folk Digital. So I um, antiqued them all and you can see these ones here. I just decided to add them. You can use them with your Wee Forest Folk. I don't think they look horrible with these. It's just a different um, effect. You know, their clothes are a little more muted. Their, their coloration is more muted and all that. Whereas these ones are a little bit more vibrant so I bet I went ahead and added them just because they're fun I love these two especially they just crack me up and you'll notice like this her wing got cut off so if you do shrink to fit or um, add a border or however your printer does that you'll have better luck with the cutting off I did leave borders when I put them on the pages but sometimes just by formatting and whatever on a printer it'll cut certain parts off. So the best way to not have that is to tell your printer to, you know, fit to page, shrink to fit, whatever the thing is on your printer, and that'll help from that happening. I just didn't do that today. I just printed them all out. So there's that page, and then there's this one with some just ephemera. I made a funny little mushroom house from the mushroom houses that I sell in my shop. I just did one all in color there. And then um, these are just bits and pieces that I used in the digital. And this is just a bingo card. And I just added some pieces to it for some fun ephemera. And then there's another page of fairies and things to cut out. So, yeah, see over here, this one got cut off a little bit. So, yeah, just shrink to fit and that will make it so that doesn't happen. And the same thing with the mushroom over here. He got a little chopped. But you'll get a page of mushrooms in these colors. This one's more vibrant, um, summery, you know, is what I was going for. Pinks and purples, blues, you know, for summer. And our flowers, I backed these with um, some color because I thought that would make them a little bit easier to cut out. I know they're kind of pow, but I think if you just kind of do leave your little white edge a little bit around there, I think they'll come out great. So that's why I added the color because, you know, the in and the out and all that, I just... I knew I didn't want to cut them out like that, so I added the color behind them. And then, and plus I like it in the background there. Here we have tags. I did two pages of tags and journaling cards. So yeah, so that's a 24 page digital download there, the um, We Flower Fairies digital. So that is that. I'm taking my jacket off because I'm roasting. I was cold, now I'm hot, it's that time of the year where I can't ever decide what temperature I am. So what we're going to do now is play with just spattering and getting our stuff ready for this next journal, which I'm going to make out of manila file folders. These are just basic manila file folders that I got at the dollar store. They're nothing special or fancy, they measure um, 11 and three quarters by about nine and a half, roughly, with the little tab. Without the tab, they're more like nine and a quarter. So they're just basic ones. They're not big ones. They're not any weird size. They're just basic office um, manila file folders. So one of them, I'm going to stitch up the sides and turn into a pocket to put the journal into. And the other one will be the journal cover. But what I wanted to do is, um, you know, ink them up a little bit, get them ready for doing that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's what we're going to do. So I have my piece of uh, Malamine here. I think that's what this stuff's called. And we're just going to put some of the tin faults um, 
protein gone there. And that one is spun sugar. And then we're just going to kind of drip it and spatter it and do all that fun stuff. So thank you so much for all your kind comments um, yesterday regarding my little <laughs> tirade that I was on on Wednesday. I don't know what my deal was, but anyway, I apologize. I do that sometimes. But um, yeah, I have no plans of going anywhere. I just get frustrated, I think, because I feel like I work real hard. And I know we all do, so it's not just me. I'm not special. But, um, yeah, I and mean, it just feels like I'm getting nowhere sometimes. So, it can be frustrating, but, yeah, I was just being a la la, basically. Cry me a river, right? But thank you for all your kindness. It can be a little bit frustrating, though. So, um, yeah, I'm just taking different colors. Oh, this purple color is Dusty Concord. So we're going to, oops, spraying my hand. Great. This is just water in this, just to give me some splatteriness. And I did spray coffee. That's what the other one was. And a lot of this may get covered with papers and whatever. I'll probably do some collaging to thicken these up a little bit. These are pretty thin um file folders because they come from the dollar store it's like they're they do like a little bit lower grade version i think for the dollar store if that makes sense now we're gonna use some of our blue spray that i just forgot this makes this whole thing way easier this distress oxide spray and this one is tumbled glass I just want, you know, some color, interest, whatever. Wherever I don't collage, I want it to have something, right? So I'm going to take this one, and I know I haven't done the back, but I'll get there. It's got, it's got to go in stages, right? Because if I flip it over right now, I'm going to ruin some of my little uh, blops. And I'm going to put it on a um, shower curtain I have over here. And we'll just keep trucking along and I'll probably do some, um, what do you call it? Oh, some scraps too. Actually, let's just flip this over and see if we can't. To see what we get, right? Not great, but. And of course now the garbage man's out there. <laughs> it's always the way. I'm going to put this other color on here too. This is um, shaded lilac. And I'll do a little bit of coffee. And then where do I put my water? Oh my gosh, it's right in front of my eyeballs. So I hope you're all having a good day. I don't think I even said that because I just got blah, blah, blah. So excited about, I was very excited to be done with the frog journal. <laughs> I mean, I really enjoyed it, but I do feel like it was time for that to be done. And you guys were so awesome to follow along <laughs> that whole time. But hopefully at least you got, if you know, you weren't crazy about the whole huge journal thing like that. Hopefully you got some ephemera ideas because I do feel like we did lots of ephemera for that journal for sure. Um, so hopefully there was at least that out of it. Because I know it was a little bit much. But it was very fun. And I learned a lot. <laughs> and we have to do that sometimes. And I'll go through how I'm going to cut those and everything. I'll probably, in fact, um, stop, or maybe we'll do it the next video because we're getting used a lot of time. This is just a piece of that sticker paper that you can put through the printer. And this is um, Medieval Mirage paper, if you're wondering. I'm just going to pick up some of this stuff that 
that left out here on the outside because it's still good ink. But yeah, it's Medieval Mirage paper, and I'm, it's one of her black and white ones. It's one of the silhouette digitals of hers, and I don't know exactly which one. I apologize for that, because like I said, I just pulled these out of my scrap box. But they are super fun, because um, they're just, you know, the black and white, so it's fun to add the color to. Sorry, I went blank there for a minute. All right, this is just white watered down acrylic paint. That's all it is. You could totally use gesso, use whatever you like. You could use ink. I'm just going to do this. Just want, you know, kind of, I want it to go with that very digital. And I'll probably do some of this on the manila file holder too. I just forgot. Okay. For a minute. Let's scooch this out of the way. Just pick up this paint. And like I said, these are all just scraps. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what paper. This is kind of an embossed paper. I didn't emboss this one. I don't have I have a, like two embossing folders. So yeah. But um, that looks kind of cool. So maybe what I want to do with this one is wipe this paint off for now. I don't want to get paint on my oxide pads. And I'm just, I know I'm off screen, but I'm just taking this and putting it on the melamine again, the distressings. not doing anything different than I was doing before. Okay, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna lose that square shape. And then I'm just gonna flip it over honestly and spread it on here. Because the embossed Part looks kind of cool like that and you can do this to any of your scraps this was originally got this idea from Louisa Hansel I'm sure most people have seen her do that but um, it's just a good way to kind of zhuzh up your scraps you know make them a little more interesting because you know we all get bored of the same pieces of paper all the time at least I know I do and so this is just kind of a fun way to make them a little more interesting again. Okay, I'm gonna wipe that off. I'm actually gonna take another piece of paper and put it right down on my piece of plastic here. That's all this is. It's um, for doing stencils, and a lot of times I'll have pieces left over, and so I use them for this type of thing. So there's that. And that scrap is from the Cockney Craft Shop, and she's on Etsy. She hasn't done any videos in a really long time, but I know she does still have her Etsy shop, and that's her faux fabric is what this is. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of the white paint again. I know I kind of wasted that last bit of white paint, but I really want to do this effect because it looks so cool on top of the... Um, embossed paper. Just looks neat. And this will be a big fat mess. <laughs> but that's okay. Because I can just wash this out. This is just the lid to a baking sheet. Like, um, we got these large baking sheets to make brownies. You know, they had an edge on them. I don't know what you call them. But anyway, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. And uh, they have lids, and we never, ever use the lid. So I sold the lid to do this stuff in. I do coffee dyeing in these. It works great. So I'm just going to take this out and put it on the shower curtain to dry. And I'll 
just take a piece of music cage. Do the same thing. So we're just trucking along. So this is a great idea if you're just starting out and you don't have maybe a lot of papers or if you can't print digitals or those kind of things. This sort of thing can be great because um, you can take any paper. You could take just plain drawing paper or construction paper and do this kind of stuff to it. And it's just going to give it, you know, interest. Make it look a little bit more artsy or whatever. Which is fun. Kind of like this. Let me just turn it over. I feel like you get a little more of the color. Picking up color, putting down color. <laughs> just basically making a mess, really. <laughs> okay, let's do some of the purple. The pink is so light, you don't see it a whole lot, I feel like. It might work better to do with a um, paintbrush or something. I can do some more spatters. Let's do a little bit more of this over here. All right, now I'm going to put that one over to dry. So just play, have fun, go for it. And then on Monday's video, I'll come back and um, I'll do the other side of those um, file folders the same way that I'm doing here. And then I'll come back and cut the sizes and all that stuff and show you how I do that part. So we'll do that one start to finish and it'll be a basic uh, regular journal. I mean, it'll go in that envelope, but it's gonna just be a basic style one. real light. Why not a little more concentrated? It just it just goes away. I think it's just too light. I like the lightness of it, but it just won't stay. So if you're looking for a very light Tim Holtz pink distress ink, it's the sponge sugar. There we go. Looks good. Put a little spritz of coffee on there. Okay. But yeah, I think those uh, will be fun to play with. And there's just a piece of doily. These are a couple more random bits. The biggest struggle with this, you know what would be, would be smart is to have a piece of malamine for each color, like a smaller piece. That way you could just keep going. You wouldn't have to mess with it so much.
I've even ended up using the strip that's along the side of um, papers after, you know, doing this kind of stuff to them because it just looks cool. I'm trying to play with Joel's Pasha. It's in here snorting and snuffing because he's mad. <laughs> he just, she just does not want to play with him and he is a pest. Every once in a while she will, so I think that's, he gets his hopes up, you know. <laughs> but she's just kind of getting old and cranky. is similar to that, but I apparently need some more pinks, I think. Let's see, I'm trying not to get it all over my mat, but that's probably not going to work. And then you could add gold, which I may end up doing. I mean, you could do a lot of things to get it all the color options you want. But yeah, just don't forget about this idea because this is a great idea for making our scraps a little more interesting. I definitely appreciate it. Since I do get bored easy. <laughs> of course, the thing you have to remember with adding acrylic is it does make the paper more stiff. The, um, Inks don't do that, but the acrylics do. And I love the gold. The problem I have with the gold is that a lot of the times it pops off once it dries, which I find very strange, but it does. So just be aware. I mean, it doesn't all come off, but some of it does, so. All right. So I think that is good for today. And then, like I said, I will come back and do a video for Monday that will have um, that will have, you know, showing how to cut the manila file folder and all that. Try a little green, just a little. So. I will be back with all of that on Monday. I will talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful weekend. Love you guys. Bye now.